Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from Bogota, Colombia, in the Andes Mountains in South America. Now, on this day, in Venezuela was born a gentleman named Simon Bolivar. He is, uh, full name is Simon Simon Jose Antonio de la Santisma Trinidad Bolivar y Ponte Palacio y Blanco on the 24th of July 1783. He was a beloved Venezuelan military and political leader who led what are currently the countries of Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, Panama, Peru, and Bolivia to independence from the Spanish Empire. He is known colloquially, colloquially as El Liberator or the Liberator of America. Simon Bolivar was born in Caracas, Venezuela into a wealthy family and as was common for heirs of upper class families in the day, he was sent and educated abroad. At a very young age, he arrived in Spain when he was 16 and later he moved to France. While in Europe, he was introduced to the ideas of the Enlightenment, which later motivated him to overthrow the reigning Spanish in colonial South America. So he was educated in Spain, whereupon he learned how to overthrow the Spanish in their own country. Taking advantage of this disorder in Spain, prompted by the Peninsula War, Simon Bolivar began his campaign for independence in 1808. The campaign for the independence of Colombia, Gran Colombia, later New Grenada, was consolidated with the victory at the Battle of Boyacá, which I've made a video about already, on the 7th of August, 1819. He established and organized a national congress within three years. Now, the Battle for Boyoka video will be released on August 7th, so you're going to have to wait another month for the, to see that video. Despite a number of hindrances, including the arrival of an expen, un, unprecedentedly large Spanish expeditionary force, the revolutionaries eventually prevailed, culminating in the victory at the Battle of Carabobo in 1821, which effectively made Venezuela an independent country. Following this massive success over the Spanish monarchy, Simon Bolivar participated in the foundation of the first union of independent nations in Latin America, Gran Colombia, of which he was president from 1819 to 1830. Okay, through further military campaigns, he ousted Spanish rulers, so he booted the Spanish out of Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia. Now, Bolivia is a country that is actually named after Simon Bolivar. He was simultaneously president of Gran Colombia, which is present-day present Venezuela, Colombia, Panama, and Ecuador. Peru and Bolivia uh, were soon after. And his second in command, Antonio Jose de Sucre, was appointed president of Bolivia. So, Simon Bolivar, his mission was aiming at a strong and united Spanish America, able to cope not only with the threats emanating from Spain and the European Holy Alliance, but also with the emerging power of the United States. At the peak of his power, Simon Bolivar ruled over a vast territory from the Argentine border to the Caribbean Sea. Bolivar is, is viewed as a national icon in much of modern South America, much like George Washington is in the United States as, our, as the founding father of our country. Bolivar is considered one of the great heroes of Hispanic independence and the independence movement of the early 19th century along with his partner, Jose de San Martin, Francisco de Miranda, and other people. It wasn't just one person. Towards the end of his life, Simon Bolivar despaired of the situation in his native region with the famous quote, all who served the revolution have plowed the sea. Okay. 
in an address to the Constituent Congress of the Republic of Colombia. Now, Simon Bolivar, in, in today's political day, in today's political climate, will be considered a conservative Republican. In, in an address to the Constituent Congress of the Republic of Colombia, Simon Bolivar stated, Fellow citizens, I blush to say this independence is the only benefit we have acquired to the detriment of all the rest. So he was, he was, Simon was, Simon Bolivar, a brave guy, was, was trying to figure out exactly what it is he had accomplished. Simon Bolivar was also an admirer of both the American Revolution and the French Revolution. And while he was an admirer of U.S. independence, he wasn't fully sure that it was going to function uh, like uh, the same way uh, in Latin America. He figured, you know, he claimed, that he thought in his mind that Latin America needed a firm hand and, uh, and uh, it was a different mindset. Thus he claimed that the governance of the heterogeneous act social societies like Venezuela will require a firm hand. But in 1991, you come all the way forward to 1991, Colombia did adopt our constitutional governance, way of governance. And they have been successful ever since. Now, due to the historical relevance of Simon Bolivar, as a key element during the process of independence in Hispanic America, his memory has been strongly attached to sentiments of nationalism and patriotism being a recurrent theme of rhetoric and politics, even today, uh, since Simon Bolivar's image uh, has become an, import an important part of the national identities of Venezuela, Colombia, Panama, Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia. His mantle is often claimed by Hispanic American politicians all across the political spectrum. So Republicans and Democrats in our country also recognize Simon Bolivar as a great, Ameri a great uh, hero of uh, Latin America. There are monuments and a physical legacy to Simon Bolivar all over the world. Uh, the nation of, Bol of Bolivia and the Bolivarian, Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela and their respective currencies, the Bolivian Boliviano and the Venezuelan Bolivar, are all named after Simon Bolivar. Uh, although the Venezuelan uh, Bolivar right now is, isn't doing too well, it's pretty much worthless. And uh, U.S. currency is more powerful in Venezuela than the, than the Venezuelan currency. Uh, most cities and towns in Colombia and Venezuela are built a main, around a main square known as Plaza Bolivar, uh, as is in Bogota. Right down, right here, 20 minutes down the road by bus is Plaza Bolivar. And this, in, in this example, most government buildings and public structures are located on or around the plaza, including the national capital uh, and the Palace of Justice. Um, you, you even have, you also have the National Museum of Colombia close to Plaza Bolivar, which houses and has, has a, um, what, how do you say this, remnants of his past, knives and forks, his, his plates that he used when he was in, uh, in the palace, when he was president. There are historical artifacts in the, in the National Museum of Colombia in Bogota, um, which, which have artifacts from Simon Bolivar. Um, and and here, here in Bogota, we have uh, the Simon Bolivar Park. And I haven't made a video about Simon Bolivar Park, but I think I will. It's a beautiful place to go with the family and to see the ducks and to relax. And this park uh, has hosted many, many concerts in the past. Outside of Latin America, the variety of monuments that uh, recognize Simon Bolivar are a continuing uh, testament to his legacy. These include statues in many capitals around the world, including Algiers, Bucharest, London, Minsk, New Delhi, Ottawa, Paris, Prague, Port-au-Prince, Rome, Tehran even has a, a monument to Simon Bolivar, Vienna, and Washington, D.C. in the United States of America. A school, a Simon Bolivar school in Bulgaria is named in his honor. Several cities in Spain even, uh, especially in the Basque Country, have constructed monuments to the Bolivar name, including a large monument in the town called Bilbao and a comprehensive 
uh, Venezuelan government funded museum in Santa Rosa, Puebla de Bolivar, his ancestral hometown in Venezuela. Um, in the United States, there is an imposing bronze equestrian statue of Simon Bolivar, which stands at the southern entrance to Central Park at the Avenue of the Americas in New York City, which also celebrates Simon Bolivar's contributions to Latin America uh, in, the, in the past. In New Orleans, there's the Simon Bolivar Monument at Canal and Basin Streets. And uh, this was a gift to the American city uh, from Venezuela. So Venezuela gifted New Orleans these monuments to Simon Bolivar. In the, the Bolivar Peninsula in Texas, you have Bolivar County in Mississippi. Uh, you have Bolivar, New York, and Bolivar, West Virginia. You even have Bolivar, Ohio, and Bolivar, Tennessee. All these towns across the United States are named after Simon Bolivar, the constitutional conservative Republican. Monuments to Bolivar's military legacy also compri comprise one of Ven the Venezuelan's Navy cell training ships, which is named after him. And then there is the USS Simon Bolivar, a Benjamin Franklin class fleet ballistic missile submarine, which served in the United States Navy between 1965 and 1995. And I had the distinct honor of working on and s helping to service the USS Simon Bolivar in La Maddalena, Sardinia, Italy in the uh, US Gulf War, 1990-1991. There's even a minor planet named after Simon Bolivar. It's called 712 Boliviana and it was discovered by an, an astronomer named Max Wolf. And this planet is named in his honor. And the name was suggested by Camille Flarion, uh, the first Venezuelan satellite that was launched into space. Venusat-1 was given the alternative name, Simon Bolivar, after him. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, Simon Bolivar is a famous person. Uh, he's, he's a very powerful political figure in the world globally. And he liberated a whole continent from Spanish rule. And On the 17th of uh, December, 1830, at the young age of 47 years old, Simon Bolivar uh, died of tuberculosis in the Quindi San Pedro Alejandrino in Santa Marta, Colombia. It was called Gran Colombia then, but it's in Santa Marta, Colombia, on the Caribbean coast near uh, north of Cartagena. On his deathbed, Simon Bolivar asked his aide de camp, General Daniel F. O'Leary, to burn the remaining extensive archives of his writings, letters, and speeches. O'Leary disobeyed the order, and his writings have survived, providing historians with a wealth of information about Bolivar's liberal philosophy and thought, as well as details of his personal life. Now, when we say liberal philosophy, we are talking about his conservative, ideas and freedoms that were back in the day liberalism was freedom freedom for this country conservatism uh, sh shortly before uh, his death um, you know Simon Bolivar was a, was a brave strong honorable patriot uh, the love of his life was Manuela Sayez and shortly before her death in 1856, uh, Senora uh, Sayez aug augmented this collection of writings by giving O'Leary her own letters from Simon Bolivar. And the transfer of uh, Simon Bolivar's remains from Santa Marta, Colombia to uh, Caracas, Venezuela uh, was, was uh, basically happened 12 years later. So Simon Bolivar was buried, buried in Santa Marta, Colombia, and then 12 years later his remains were transferred to Caracas in Venezuela in 1842 at the request of President Jose Antonio Payes, and uh, he was the, back, the former president of Venezuela. Thank mm -hmm. you.